the Kings keep humming along. They've got the fifth best record in the NHL. Normally when you have success on the road, teams talk about keeping it simple. That might be the case for the LA Kings. The big reason they're having that success, depth and balance. Perfection in the NHL doesn't exist. It's a long year. We've got some ups and downs, and we have to be patient but push. That's what we're doing right now. Hey there. You know, there was expectations on us this year. You know, we're not really sneaking up on anyone anymore, and, you know, everyone gets along, and in the locker room's fun, and, and being on the road's been great. And, um, you know, when it comes to game time, everyone knows it's game time. And, um, yeah, we've been playing pretty well. How are you doing? Right. Trevor, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. How's you guys' golf games? Really good. Shaky. Really good. All right. <laughs> there we go. Okay. How are you doing? Yeah, Trevor. Really good, okay. You got uh, big shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, oh, we had, we had Tyler, Tyler two years in a row. Oh, you had Tough? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's kind of a cheater, though, isn't he? Obviously, I played here for so long that I know a lot of people around the rink and you know away from the rink too so it was a pretty e easy transition for us and you know the, the kings is such a good organization that if you need help with anything too someone's going to help you out so it's been it's been a pretty easy transition coming back yeah take it I don't know why it's different home and road, but I think just maybe we're with the guys all the time and you know not as many distractions and stuff like that. But I, I think our our home record is you know I think we're playing better than um, the record is, and I don't think it's a, it's an excuse. I think um, that's kind of one part of you learn about being a pro right away is you know how to prepare the same way and whether you're home or road or wherever you are. When I was first coming in, I looked up to a lot of guys too and. You know, I try to be the that guy if, if someone needs, you know, has questions or, you know, is is learning about the league or whatever they have. So I think, you know, I kind of pay it forward as, you know, guys did that for me too. And, um, you know, I think that's just a part of um, becoming a leader and, um, yeah, just kind of adapting from there. Oh, that man. is an absolute laser. Now, welcome to the Scorebooks, your LA Kings. Well, Jim, last night in Vegas, another road win. Ho hum. That's seven road wins and seven starts. Now, the objective as the Kings start a four game homestand, get some wins on home ice. Just one in five starts so far. I think tonight is the biggest test of all because of the emotional issues that went on. You're coming home after a four game road trip. That's always difficult. So it's up to the Kings, if possible. Forget all that pass right now. Strap them on. Do it again. Latang, a little give and go. He's in too deep. He centers the pass blocked. I think it hit a player. Now the wraparound. Crosby scores. You're not going to be your best for 82 games. There's going to be your best game and your worst game in 82. It doesn't matter if you win or lose them. You have to find ways to, to scratch and claw points out of those nights. Steal, Kopitar in front, Gregstrom! 1-0-1, one, and one. Kempe, a shot, he scores! To Crosby, a shot, pass, and they score! Gensel! Barrier, deflects, shot, score! And Fiala ties the game at three. Hands it off, Russ to the circle, in too deep. The wraparound, and did he score? He did! Russ gets the game winner. Penguins win it 4-3 in overtime. A coach has to direct things. He has to lead things. And I've noticed a change in the way Todd is presenting things right now. Last year, Byfield and Kaliev. Okay, they're still kids. We're not putting pressure on them. My job as a head coach is to take the pressure off those kids. This year, no, no, no. We need production. Well, we're giving up way too many goals on home ice. And what's causing that? I think every night there's been a, a bit of a different uh, scenario. I, I believe at our last presser after last game or maybe the game before at home, I was asked if I'm concerned. And I wasn't because 
the beginning of the year was the beginning of the year. Uh, but now I am a little bit, so um, we're going to have to fix it. I think that he sees the bigger picture, right? You can't win the cup in October. All you can do is bank points for the playoffs, and you, you can't win the cup until you make the playoffs. So I think he, he can kind of see that. He knows that while expectations are higher, this isn't a perfect team. There's still work to be done. There's still improvements to be made. The Kings have entered the conversation of being a contender. And I feel that from Todd. I feel that the way he talks about the group. I feel like that there, there certainly is a plan, but I think that expectations have gone up. He values uh, you playing uh, the same way with the puck as you do without the puck. We all wanted to go in the right direction. We all want to start winning. And for me to be out there as much as I can, I got to value, you know, not just uh, the shifts when I have the puck, but the shifts without the puck. The word we use in hockey quite a bit nowadays is structure. And I'm not sure if there's a group in the league right now that structure is as important to them in the Los Angeles Kings. I don't know if I've seen a team as good as this current team right now that takes things from practice they're working on something in practice, and I swear the next game I see it. Timer score! That must be so rewarding to the coaching staff, to the players, to know that what you're working on, what you're putting your commitment to, shows up in a game and can be successful in a game. We spent this week trying to figure a few things out as a team, um, you know, how we were going to do things, um, what was important from line to line. We talked a lot about handing off a, a good shift. I thought our shift length and our commitment to, uh, to the battles, to shot blocking, um, was significantly better than it was last week, and it showed up in the game. If Kopi's blocking shots, if Kempe's blocking shots, then what excuse does anybody have, right? Because those are your lead guys. That's your point per game center who leads the team in points every year. It's your 40 goal scoring winger who leads the team in goals. These guys are out there doing it. And I think it trickles kind of throughout the lineup when if your leaders are playing the game the right way, it sets the example that this is how the game's played here. It's really not about the goals and the assists. It's about going right until the end and, and win the whole thing. So um, I think this team, has it. It's it's very special. I think pieces are far in, into place. The Kings hold on and defeat the Florida Panthers. It's no secret that we need to make this building a little tougher to play in, and I think tonight's a good step in the right direction. It's you know we've changed quite a bit from from last year. Um, you know the system itself. We're feeling good, obviously, with with the changes, and we're doing a good job. Guys are blocking a ton of shots and. The ones they get through, Cam, Cam's there to, uh, you know, hold us up. So it's, uh, it's been, it's been working. At the goal line, Kopitar centers, Byfield a chance, and he scores! How fortunate would it be to have Andre as a mentor? I mean, to be able to watch him, to be able to talk to him, and then just to watch his games, just to sit there and, you know, you're watching your shift, maybe you're taking over him from the next shift, you're the next centerman up, or your next line come, just to be able to watch the way he manages the situation. I've been playing with him for yeah, the last couple of seasons, which uh, obviously has helped me a lot. You know, it's becoming a lot easier for me to, to be out there when you have a guy like him. When we're out there together, I, for all my years in the league, 15 years, I, every time I got the puck, if I was out there with Kopi, that's the first guy I'm looking for to get the puck to every single time. Locked off by Byfield, broke his stick, puck sent down into the empty net. Kopitar, number 400. Somebody's got to grab that puck. And it's going to be Drew Doughty who grabs it. He's so invaluable. Obviously, his play on the ice is next level Hall of Fame. He's breaking records every, every other week, it seems like, this season, which is fun to be a part of. Sometimes when you watch players game after game, season after season, you take what they do for granted. And for those of us lucky enough to have seen Andre throughout his entire 18 years in the NHL, that's not the case. It's the way he handles himself, 
while doing so. I'm one of the most humble humans I've ever met treats you with kindness and respect, whether you're a fourth line guy or the rink janitor or the kitchen cook, I mean, he's gonna treat you with respect. And I think that kind of breeds culture. I know this for sure, his number's probably gonna go in the rafters next to Brownies and Blakey's and Luke's, and his picture's probably gonna be on a wall in Toronto, at least I believe that. So that's a pretty simple answer for what he's meant to the organization. He's a, a mentor or a role model for just about every young player coming up, whether you're forward D-man or a goaltender. You can't just be a great talent. It's what you do day in and day out, off the ice, getting ready, getting prepared for a game, the attitude you bring every day, and that's that's when uh, Kopey's the ultimate pro, and Drew is the ultimate competitor. These guys want to win. The veterans are essential uh, if they're carrying their weight. Right now, our two, our three, if you want to include Trevor Lewis, former Stanley Cup champs, are carrying their weight. They're doing what they need to do, and we talk about their leadership qualities and all that type of stuff. Uh, the best leadership you can have is when they're playing well on the ice and everybody's watching them do it. If you have a chance to play with Drew Doughty, I think that puts you in the, because you're going to be on the ice in high priority situations. You know, end of period, end of game, power play. When the game's on the line, Drew's going to be on the ice. And if you're out there with him, there's no better education than that. You're going to go through it. For Anderson, cross ice, tipped out to Doughty, who scores! makes it so easy. You just tell the young guy, look at Drew Doughty. Look at the career he's had. Look at the championship he's done, you know. Look at what he's still doing. Now they work it out to the blue line, broken up in a break. Short-handed break, Kempe in. Deeks, scores! A big reason why the team's in the window that it is, because you still have those older guys, your Kopitar's, Doughty's, who are at that high level. But you have guys at different stages coming through, like a Kempe is entering in his prime. Consistency is really hard when you're young. That's probably the main thing that I just tried to, to work on, just get more uh, even throughout my, uh, for my game. You know, eventually I figured it out. I started playing uh, more consistently with uh, more minutes every night, and I, I figured I'm out there for a reason, and that's because the coach is trusting me. There's always competition within, and Kopi and Juice and those guys are, are sorting it out. They're, they're producing and scoring. But I still think it's the team as a whole that's going to give us a chance at any success. So it won't be any, one individual or two. It will be the team as a whole. Here's a steal and a chance. What's up, buddy? Uh, How's it going? Ice wall? He's Chris. Ice wall? Yeah. Nice, I like that. <laughs> Part of what the Kings want to do is get more people into hockey, get more people passionate about hockey, and so when we do these, it only helps grow the game in the area. Who's your guys' favorite player? You, who? Anyone? Start yelling. No, that's like, the question was you. Drew? Drew? Am I your favorite player? Like that? No, yeah. no, we gotta get Drew. Drew? I like Drew. Hey, what's up? Want me to sign this? Yeah. Right down there? Yeah. All right. You ready to play some hockey? Yeah. Are you guys itching to get out on the ice? Yeah! Yeah! Oh! The one scenario that every single player has experienced is minor hockey. You didn't skip minor hockey and play in the NHL. Everybody had somebody that drove them to the rink. It didn't have to be mom or dad. It could be a mentor, a, a neighbor. Ah! Everybody had somebody that bought them equipment that somehow got them on the ice. And that's what we're going to celebrate and, and make sure that the kids understand that we all came through this too and we're giving back. Ice safe. The ice wall. All right. Nice. Drew Doughty lost. 
Not the first time we've seen that. <laughs> we were all the little kids once, so you get to have, you know, any one of us show up at the rink when, when you're a kid. It, you know, a day you remember for a long, long time. Oh my God. I think it's really cool to have a day like the rink tours where everybody's out in the community at the same time. You're not just impacting one skate, you're impacting seven. That's a, that's a goal in any league. That, that was a doobie shot, eh? That was a doobie shot. Top or right, low, low, low blocker. It's a tight schedule for sure, but it shows how important it is that the Kings will take that day, they'll move their practice earlier to be able to accommodate this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you. Thank you guys, thanks for having us. Thank you, good luck in the game. Thank you guys. On the quality of opposition, the Kings got a very difficult draw at the start of the year, right? All four division winners and then the first like seven games, they're playing playoff teams pretty regularly. So they had a very difficult start in terms of quality of opponent, a very soft start in terms of how the games have broken down. And if you looked at 22-23 to 23-24, at the end of November, this year the Kings played 20 games. Last year the Kings played 26 games. That's a full game a week extra. So the Kings have done a great job of banking points when the schedule was more forgiving from a day's point of view. To the right circle, a shot, he scores! Another shorthanded goal! Now they're going to start going every other day, and that can be a good thing to kind of build rhythm, to build the, the routine that you want to have throughout the season. The rookie LaFerriere, room, in, feeds to no, shoots, scores! And the Kings' road winning streak is now at eight. Early in the year, tough competition and tests, right? How can the Kings match up? What's the test going to be? I think those tests have changed to internal testing right now. They're testing themselves. Todd McCollum said yesterday, the Kings are in a good spot right now, but with that comes responsibility. Bounces wide of the net. Fiala a chance, and he scores! The Los Angeles Kings have set a franchise record. Their ninth straight win on the road. It's gonna take everybody, right? That's the beauty of it is, not everyone's gonna have their on nights when you're playing that regular. You need contributions from the back end. You need everybody going. You need lines to pick up lines that are having off nights. Dubois fighting off a check, feeds it across, a blast, score! And that's maybe been the best part of this team is that Kings do have that. Like they have lines that can drive play on nights when the big guns don't have it. Weaving his way into the middle, hands it off, right side. In front of Combs, and they score! Trevor Moore again! Kings start a four-game road trip here tonight. It'll be a busy week, four games and six nights. But, Jim, the story is, can the Kings keep it going on the road? The Blue Jackets shot up high, block, loose in front, chance, score! Olivier finishes it, 3 nothing Blue Jackets. Well, we haven't been perfect every night. We've found ways to win, sometimes with our B game. And uh, anytime you go on a, a winning streak, whether it's home or road, you've got to be able to do that. Feeds it down low, deflects, shot, Gabrikov, save, loose puck, and they score! For Kaliev. To the net on his backhand, spinning, leaves it in front, a chance, Anderson Dillon scores! The Kings have tied the game at three. Kempe in turn for Doughty, and to Kovatar to Doughty, a one-timer, he scores! Ten straight road wins for the Kings! Our team feels good about themselves, they have some confidence, but with confidence comes responsibility. Those ten games are all in the past. I know it's natural to talk about it, but the present's what we're concerned with. For us to move forward, we're gonna have to play better than we did in Columbus. Dowdy moving in with space, hit on goal, holds on, and scores! And in the 100th 
107 year history of the NHL, the Kings are doing something no other team has ever done. Win the first 11 road games of a season. 4 0, the final. It's just been so much fun to be on the road with these guys, and I'm obviously not something you come to the season looking to accomplish, but uh, it's fun nonetheless. You know, normally we're downplaying achievements, talking about getting to the next game, but I think that we have to acknowledge the group has played really well and really proud of the group. They've, uh, they've accomplished something, yet yeah, there's a lot of hockey left. Obviously, you're trying to come to the rink and try and win a game, and it's been going well, so uh, we're going to keep on trying to ride the wave. Cross-ice pass, Kepe scores! As the Kings are on a loose puck, Fiala across. Shot, score, Gavrikov! 2-0 LA. In the attacking zone, hands it off, shot taken. Score on the rebound! We didn't come in and say, hey, we've got to get to whatever it was, 11 in Montreal or 12 here. We just worry about our game. The Islanders have snapped the Kings 11 game road winning streak. We've seen a lot of things have been going our way, so it's nice, um, you know, have a little adversity. I don't think there's going to be any sense of panic or, or anything in the group. We trust what we have here, we trust what we're doing, and get back in LA and um, get back to work. Very few times have I been amazed at what someone is doing. And what I see right now from Andre Kopitar and the continued consistency, I don't know if I've seen that before. I really don't. Now he's moving beyond the Kings franchise. He's moving into the history of the NHL status.